bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. God bless you, family and friends. Welcome. Today I have a word from the Lord. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this video. The church has been plundered by the enemy. We look like the world. We talk like the world. We behave like the world. We don't want to be categorized as homophobic because we stand against the practices contrary to the word of God. We don't want to be categorized as discriminating for not supporting beliefs contrary to our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Church, we have to take a stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 10, 32 through 33 reads, Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him will I also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him will I also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Some of us may not deny him in words, but we deny him by our actions. We deny him by not taking a stand for righteousness and holiness in our silence, our conversations, the places we hang out, the company we keep, our habits, the things we entertain, the music we listen to, the programs we watch. If our friends, co-workers, neighbors, and community only get to experience your kindness and good deeds, but never get to hear about Jesus, that's not good enough. Matthew 16, 15 says, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Jesus went around doing good, but he preached the good news of the kingdom of heaven. You may be someone's only opportunity to know about Jesus, to know that he came to offer them eternal life. And if all you do is um, offer them money, um, all the other good things, a meal, which is good. I encourage that. I believe in it. Trust me, I do. But I'm saying, if you never tell them that Jesus came to die to save you, if you never give them that opportunity to accept Christ, you have not done your job. You have not fulfilled the Great Commission. We have to tell others about the love of Jesus. We have to give them the opportunity to receive eternal life. What if, what if all you give them is your good deed and today is their last day? Your good deed, will that take them to heaven? No. It's good that we exercise good deeds, but... It is not enough. We have to tell them it's an opportunity. The good deeds, it's an opportunity to open the door that you can tell them about Jesus. You can tell them, hey, this is not from me. It is the Lord Jesus that is extending his love to you. The Lord Jesus, he wants you to know that he's here for you. The Lord Jesus, he's saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You want to present Christ to your friends you want to present christ you can't just stay silent silent and say um well eventually i'll just keep doing good eventually they will see the love of jesus no you have to give them the opportunity because no man knows the day or the hour you don't know if today is their last day you have to give them that opportunity i recall something happened not too long ago i went to the store and um, these co-workers, I met them outside of Walmart and I asked them a question about a pickup. And they were so kind because they won their break, but they took time and, and explained to me and, and helped me that as I walked off, 
to to um to receive my item i thought wow they were so good to me what if today is their last day and after i picked up that item i went back out there to talk to them and let them know about jesus so you see this is what i'm saying we have to give people the opportunity our good deeds that is not good enough we have to present christ to them christ is what saves them christ is who saves them it's not our good deeds our good deeds doesn't save anybody amen okay so proverbs 14 34 reads righteousness makes a nation great but sin is a disgrace to any people another version says righteousness exalts a nation but sin is a reproach to any people it's our time to set ourselves apart unto god consecrate unto god that our nation can be lifted up in righteousness before god so we can pray all day long lord let righteousness exalt the nation and roll away reproach from us lord jesus but it begins with you and i this is the way it's not somebody else or it's not for god to do we are the one who have to take a stand we are the one who have to allow him to live his life we say that we have accepted him into our hearts we have to allow him to live his life we have to consecrate ourselves unto the lord that righteousness can reign in our nation it's not the people out there trust me it is us the church the church we are called by his name but trust me some of our practices does not speak of righteousness we need to consecrate ourselves to the lord and he's talking to us this is for us the church if you call yourself a believer you call yourself a christian you call yourself by the name of the lord this is you he's talking about you he's not talking about the person out there the unsafe person he's talking about you we have to arise in righteousness we have to arise in righteousness stop looking like the world we need to be separate unto the lord so that it can spread forth to others you know the workplaces the community and wherever it will spread forth but it begins with us not with them so we've been looking at them for so long thinking we are okay but we are not okay we have to do a self-check self-check this is what he's saying consecrate ourselves to the lord consecrate ourselves to the lord he wants to arise in righteousness in the nation but that is you and that is i it's every one of us those that are called by his name ezekiel 36 23 says and i will sanctify my great name which has been profaned among the nations which you have profaned in their midst and the nation shall know that i am the lord says the lord god when i am hallowed in you before their eyes so you see what i was saying he's talking to us the church he's talking to us he's saying that we have profaned his great name and he want to make his great name holy in us in you in me because we said that we have accepted him we say we are children of god so he wants to he wants to be great in us he wants to be holy in us that reproach that people keep looking and and saying um you know the way people talk down about the church you know and about believers he wants to take that away he wants to roll that kind of shame away and reproach 
and he wants to restore righteousness to his church. But who are the church? It's you and it's I. So he wants to make his name great. He wants to make his name holy in you that all will see. He wants to restore his name from shame that we can be a voice of righteousness before their eyes. He wants to set you apart that you can represent him as holiness unto the Lord before their eyes. So we can ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, give me a heart to desire you and a will to honor you. Be honest with the Holy Spirit. You know, we need the Holy Spirit. We've driven him out of a church, out of the church. We have driven him out of our churches, out of the church. It's time for us to welcome him back, give him our life. And the church is not a building. It is us. It is you and it is I, right? So let the Holy Spirit restore righteousness to you righteousness in every area of your life not in some areas we think okay this area i'll do this but then this other area i can just do me no in every area of our lives we need to give him control let him take charge let him do as he wills this is not about us it's about him it's about him fulfilling his plan his purpose in you and in I. It's not about us. It's for his pleasure. It's not for your pleasure. It's not for my pleasure. So it is about him. Let us ha let him have his way. Today, let him have his way. Tell him, Lord, take, take control. Take charge. Have your way. Let me stand up for righteousness, Lord. In my actions and in all my, my conversation, let let me stand up for righteousness and i have a testimony that i want to share um when the previous election and let me say this i'm not into politics or anything like that but the holy spirit led me to share this testimony again in what he's saying because of what he's saying to stand up for righteousness so he led me to share this testimony. So I'm sharing this. So um, I was not going to vote. That was going to be my first opportunity to, to vote. But I was not wanting to vote. Because honestly, I said, Lord, these are, these are two unrighteous people. I do not want to vote. That's what I said, the honesty of my heart. So I gave it to the Lord. However, I'd been seeking the Lord. Not about that, just seeking him. And... He began to talk to me and tell me to um, that I need to vote. And not only that I need to vote, but that I need to vote for Donald Trump. Just like that, yes. And I said, Lord, I can't vote for him. He's not righteous. I said, Lord, they are both evil people. I can't vote for them. I'm telling you, it was a struggle for a, for a week. I was struggling with this and he kept telling me vote for donald trump and he told me it's beyond what you can see so a lot of times we look at what our eyes can see what we can perceive and we do not seek god's will and say lord what is your will who do you want me to vote or do you want me to vote what do you want me to do but we just figure either we'll just stay out of this or i don't like this one and is that one i like or is that one that giving what i want so we're gonna do that one but that's not the way god sets up and he puts down so our responsibility as believers is to seek his face seek his face and his will for the nation for whichever king he wants to set up it's not about the man it's not about the president it's about god's will what he wants to do and later on i still end up getting a dream 
And prior to that, let me tell you what happened to me during that week. The neighbor comes to me, an elderly lady, and she said, are you going to vote? I said, no. She said, um, I don't like, she said, I don't like jo Donald Trump. She said that. I hate him. But she said to me, if you have to vote, vote for Donald Trump. I was shocked and I knew that the Holy Spirit was confirming to me what he had spoken to my heart. That he had told me to vote. And out of this lady's mouth, while she is here telling me she hates him, she's telling me, vote for him. So I am here to encourage you. Seek the Lord's will. And what I was going to say before that was that the Lord later, like um, 2018, gave me a dream about him. That he was asking a question, asking me a question about the Holy Spirit, Donald Trump. And from that, the Holy Spirit have been leading me to pray for him. Pray that the Holy Spirit, he'll encounter the Holy Spirit. And in the dream, I said to him, have you heard about, have you read Come Holy Spirit? Which at the time, I did not know that there was a book called Come Holy Spirit. And I said to him also, read Good Morning Holy Spirit. This one I'd heard about. But the other one, I had to go and research to see if there was actually a book called Come Holy Spirit. So I knew that the Holy Spirit was was um speaking to me and and guiding me how to pray for him. So here it is. Let God's will be done. Stand for righteousness. Even if you don't like him, stand for marriage between a man and a woman. Even if you don't like him, stand for stand for um pro life. Even if you don't like him, stand in support of Israel. So it's not about it's not about um it's not about the president, it's not about the man, it's not about the person, it's about God, God's will. What is the will of the Lord? This is what you need to do. Lord, what is your will for this nation? His will for this nation is righteousness. And we can make that statement. You and I, we can make that statement. Arise in righteousness and support what the word of God supports. We don't need no special prayer, you know. But I'm just saying, if you're having difficulty. We don't need no special prayer to, to, um, to know that we should stand for what the word of God supports. That's, that's just simple. It's simple. We're supposed to stand for righteousness. But if you are having difficulty like I was having, where you didn't want to vote because you were looking at the person, then seek the Lord and say, Lord, what is your will? And then you can go to the word of God too, and you will find it written there. So anyhow, God bless you. Let us rise up. Rise up. Rise up, the Lord wants to, to sanctify his great name. Let him sanctify his great name. Let us rise up in righteousness. So, God bless you, grace and peace to you, and continue to pursue loving Jesus. See you next time. Bye-bye.